Well, let's start off by taking a look at some wind speeds across the valley. It looks pretty good across the valley. Maybe, you know, 10, 15 mile an hour winds. That's what we've had of late now, eight miles per hour down south. A little stronger and it'll stay a little stronger for the next few days across the Colorado River Valley. Five to 15 mile an hour here and overnight lows very chilly in the 30s. Afternoon highs in the 50s soon to be 60s coming up in weather first. And thank you for joining us for Action News Live at 6 tonight. I'm Trisha Keen. And I'm Steve Wolford. Troubling new allegations tonight against State Assemblyman Stephen Brooks. He's now facing charges of domestic battery and obstructing an officer stemming from an incident this weekend. That's on top of the allegations of making threats against a fellow state lawmaker. Action News reporter Spencer Lubitz has the latest. During their most recent encounter with Stephen Brooks at his wife's home in a small gated community in the Northeast Valley, police described the assemblyman as a volatile man with quick changing emotions. According to the report, Brooks' wife told police he was grabbing her by her hair and shaking her back and forth, yelling one minute, then trying to kiss her the next, before pushing her face against the kitchen counter. When Metro arrived, they found Brooks in the driveway. They say he was combative and even tried punching one of the officers in the face. All of a sudden, I hear the Metro officers telling him to calm down, stop resisting. Um, his wife was screaming, hey, you're just making it worse, Steve. Stop, you're making it worse. While officers attempted to restrain him, Brooks reportedly mounted on top of one of the officers and said, I've got your gun. I heard one of the Metro officers scream, put it down, put it down. And he yelled, I did, I did, I put it down. And then there was a lot of wrestling going on. The report says when additional officers arrived on the scene, they found Brooks in handcuffs screaming, do you know who the I am? I'm an assemblyman, you and as officers prepared to take Brooks away in handcuffs, they say he screamed, babe, these don't let them in the house. It was a misunderstanding. I'll get you for this. But Brooks' attorney says the facts are different than what's being reported by Metro. He said Brooks tried to cooperate with officers, but they attacked him. And separate from the criminal charges, there's a select committee of assembly members currently deciding whether Brooks is fit to continue serving in the legislature. That committee will hold its first meeting tonight. In the newsroom, Spencer Lubitsch, Channel 13, Action News. Updates now on stories we're following on Action News. Police say a fire at the Sonoma Shadows Apartments over the weekend was no accident. They say a man in a jealous rage set that fire intentionally. 33-year-old Salvador Hernandez has been arrested on arson and attempted murder charges, and it's not the first time he's had run-ins with the law. Police say Hernandez was recently arrested for breaking into his ex-girlfriend's apartment with an ax and threatening to kill her. She claims she heard him on the night of the fire, the night it started, and that he has been harassing her since his release. 23 people were displaced by those flames and over $400,000 of damage was done to that complex. And we have new information on a shooting near the Las Vegas Strip last week. Metro says they have arrested 18-year-old Devante Jeffers and are still looking for 21-year-old Aria Manoy. Both are suspects in last week's shooting near the Showcase Theater. Last Wednesday, police found two people who had been shot in the elevator lobby and the third inside an elevator on the fifth floor of the garage. One of the victims is Jeremy Miller, and his doctors say he may never walk again because one of the bullets shattered two vertebrae. The city of Las Vegas is pledging a million dollars to help RTC make safety improvements at a number of bus stops around the valley, and they're calling on the county to do the same. Action News reporter Victoria Spillabody has more. It's bus shelters all over the city sitting too close to the street. That's dangerous for riders. Most cities' cars don't travel in this first lane, but here they do. So the bus stops got to go back. Rider Larry Ward says this stop at Charleston and Valley View is a good example. Little sidewalk separates the bus shelter from the cars whizzing by. What can we do to help? The city says it's reevaluating the placement of shelters and a new pledge may help riders feel safer. The city announced plans to spend a million dollars to move bus shelters back away from the curb. A million dollars to help keep our community safe. Mayor Carolyn Goodman says the pledge comes after last year's deadly bus stop accident that killed four people at Spring Mountain and Decatur. A memorial for those victims still stands here. What do you think when you look at this memorial? Like, it's crazy. Like, it still hit me to this day. Like, wow, like, that could have been me. The city says it's partnering with the RTC and the million dollars will buy private property, like portions of parking lots, so shelters can move back. 
By moving a shelter back at least five feet, you reduce the chances of an incursion of an accident by 80%. The accident here at Spring Mountain in Decatur is the reason the city is doing this, but this bus stop is in the county, so it's not eligible for city funds. So the city and the RTC are calling on all entities, including the county, to make the same million dollar pledge so they can improve bus stops across the valley. Reporting from Spring Mountain and Decatur, Victoria Spilabati, Channel 13 Action News. Victoria, thank you. A Cal Berkeley law student accused of killing an exotic bird pleads not guilty to the charges against him, including felony animal cruelty. 24-year-old Justin Tushera did not appear, but local animal activists did. They want justice for the animal that was killed. Action News reporter Michaela Zern has more tonight. Police say this man, 24-year-old Justin Teixeira, beheaded an exotic bird called Turk inside the Flamingo Wildlife Habitat while his friend egged him on. Now animal activists want him to pay. Went in there to chase this poor 14 year old bird down in his wildlife habitat and, you know, ripped his head off. Thought it was funny, threw it at each other. I mean, this is ridiculous. Fellow Berkeley law student, 24 year old Eric Choir, was also involved, accused of filming or promoting the act. He pleaded guilty to a misdemeanor in January and was sentenced to 48 hours of community service and alcohol counseling. Now it's to share his turn, and local animal activists don't want him to get off so easily. Nevada voters for animals were out ahead of the hearing looking for justice for Turk and jail time for Teixeira. We have a felony animal cruelty law in Nevada now, and we expect that uh, people, if you commit the crime, you need to do the time. Which could very well happen. If convicted of both felony charges, Teixeira could face time in prison. Michaela Zern, Channel 13, Action News. Teixeira's preliminary hearing was set for April 24th at 9 a.m. To learn more about Nevada voters for animals, just go to our website at ktnv.com. We have a link to their Facebook page. Type links in the search box at the top of the page there. Well, police are investigating a murder at a local apartment complex. The victim has been identified as 23-year-old Sidney Johnson of Las Vegas. He was found shot to death Saturday night at the Wind Palms Apartments on Wind Road. Police aren't saying whether they have a suspect in custody just yet. A surprise announcement from the Vatican this morning with the resignation of Pope Benedict effective at the end of the month. Benedict, now 85, cites his age and health for the reason for stepping down. He now becomes the first pope to resign in 600 years. The Vatican says a conclave will be held before Easter to quickly elect Benedict's replacement. Word of Pope Benedict's resignation came as a shock to local Catholics. Action News reporter Jessica Janner has more on their reaction. A Monday morning that surprised the world, Catholics everywhere are reacting to Pope Benedict XVI's resignation. Here in the Valley, the diocese estimates there are 455,000 Catholics. At the helm is Bishop Joseph Pepe, who has led the Diocese of Las Vegas since 2001. When we went to visit him for our uh, five-year visit uh, last spring, it was evident that we weren't sure how long he was going to spend time. Luckily for us, he was, uh, he was in good health that day. The Pope's health is the reason he's decided to step down. Bishop Pepe says Pope Benedict will leave behind a legacy centered on placing Jesus Christ at the center of people's lives. I'm sure this was a difficult decision for him and he needs our prayers at this time and also for the Cardinals coming together to elect a new Pope. Parishioners attending Mass here at the Guardian Angel Cathedral say they were surprised this morning and now they are praying for Pope Benedict and his soon-to-be successor. Yeah, we, we will pray for the, for a good successor for him. Just uh, feel a little bit sad today. I've read quite a few of his books over the years, and uh, he's a great theologian, and I think he steered the church quite well in its endeavors through trials and tribulations over the past years, and uh, he's done a marvelous job, and we should keep that in mind as well. well. I think it's probably the right thing for the church, and things will end up, you know, the way they should. Words of faith from local Catholics. In Las Vegas, Jessica Janner, Channel 13 Action News. Well, today a local man learned he was about to make a trip of a lifetime. We first talked to Alan Aliman a couple weeks ago when President Obama singled him out during his immigration speech. When he said my name, I was like, wow, that's an honor for me. Now I'm going to be, you know, an example for other dreamers for the Im immigrant community. And now he's been invited to watch the president's State of the Union speech in person tomorrow night. 
19-year-old Aliman applied for deferred action for childhood arrivals the first day they were available back in August of last year. And he received his permit in mid-October, making him the first known DACA recipient from Southern Nevada. And you can watch the president's address right here on Action News. It will be a very different speech than the one he delivered just last month. He's expected to talk about the budget, but also the need for gun reform. It begins at 6 p.m., followed by a special edition of Action News. Be smart, be safe, be seen. We want to make sure you're extra aware of Crosswalk Danger Safety Day. That's why Action News is teaming up with several organizations to raise awareness about pedestrian safety. Let's go back to uh, Action News anchor Ricky Cheese joining us live once again with more on how everybody can get involved. Ricky, I guess a lot of people already have. Oh, quite a few people have gotten involved. And a matter of fact, a lot of them were kind of drawn into this parking lot by the scene of a bus, an RTC bus, in the parking lot of Cardenas on US 95 and Decatur. This was a site for Crosswalk Safety, Danger Safety Day, to promote awareness of safety on our roadways, both for pedestrians and motorists. And we have many, many agencies that are involved in this partnership with us here at Channel 13. We've got the RTC, we've got the Napoli Group, a proud sponsor, Look Out Kids About, another sponsor. Sponsor, lots of different agencies like the Masons because it's not just about safety on the roads it's also about safety in general the Masons were actually fingerprinting kids and putting ID kits uh, together for the parents and the RTC was uh, hooking kids up with helmets because of course that is a big big concern for kids riding to and from school they've got to wear their helmets and we were also getting people to sign our pledge to be smart be safe be seen um, be smart, be safe, be smart to see, you know, the way, the way it goes. Um, on, our, on our website, on our, go online, you can sign that pledge to be aware of all of the dangers and all of the safety measures that are being put in place to keep all of us safe here in Southern Nevada. Coming up a little later on this newscast, you're going to see and hear some, some heartbreaking stories from folks who actually were involved in problems on the roadways themselves. Back to you. All right, Ricky, thank you. Too many people are dying on our roads. We have to be more careful. Sign those pledges so it's in your psyche. Yes. Be safe. Right. Still ahead, uh, a vacant house catches on fire for a third time, and neighbors are wondering what can be done to fix the problem. When you ask, we investigate. And if your phone number is on the do not call list, you need to know there's a scam email going around, and we'll show you what you need to look out for. That's coming up from Contact 13. And don't forget, Contact 13's call for action is always here fighting for you. Just contact one of our volunteers any weekday between 11 a.m. and 1 p.m. Our hotline number is 368-2255. Brian. Well, we're in the 40s right now at McCarran Airport, but the numbers you will want to hear are the 60s coming up this week. We'll take a look at when coming up in Weather First. Confused about mortgage programs available?